Hello and welcome. This is the Employment Law Show. I'm John Scholes and Lior Samfiru, co-founding partner, Samfiru Tamarkin LLP, the most positively reviewed employment law firm in this land. You can check it out. I guarantee it's true. Uh, a lot of stuff to cover in the show today. First, some contact information, 1-855-821-5900, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Has everything you need to know about employment law before you even make the phone call, free and anonymous. And if you still have questions about COVID-19, returning to work, vaccina uh, vaccinations, mandating, all that stuff, covidrights.ca. There's a handy little questionnaire for you and to get more information. But lots to cover on the show today, pal, including Severance Package 101 for Canadians. If you don't know about this by, by now, we're going to educate you. We've been doing a radio show for nine years in that regard. We'll get to some phone calls from our radio show. Might have something to do with Severance. You never know. But we always start, brother, with the week that was. What is going on for you? Well, John, I think I barely made it to the studio today, find the parking spot, ran in so we can do the show because I've been answering emails, <laughs> answering calls all day, it seems. Uh, a lot of questions these days, more than ever, about the impact of, of COVID-19 on people's job, on job security, the questions with, of vaccines and mandatory vaccinations. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So if your job has been impacted, your job security has been impacted, if you're not sure what your rights are, maybe your boss gave you some sort of an ultimatum, that line has been drawn in the sand. If you want to know what to do, this is the time, this is the place. We're going to talk about all the legal rights that you have. You may not even be aware of those. That's the thing about legal rights. You may not know you have them, but they're there. So I'm going to help you understand what they are. But of course, if I don't cover everything that answers your questions, there's always the second option. We'll give you throughout the show my contact information so you can call, you can email, so we can have a private discussion. Very, very important to do that. Employment laws impact all of us. We all have to, to work. We all have jobs, so we need to know what our rights are. And I always like to start, as you said, week that was a situation that came across my desk. Now, last week on the show, we talked about mandatory vaccines. We talked about the fact that the rights that employees have if their employer says you have to get a vaccine or else. Now, despite the fact that, you know, personally, I do support vaccines, ultimately, from a legal standpoint, a mandatory vaccine is, may well be illegal. It could be a human rights violation, not something an employer should just do if there's no government mandate. Well, this week, I've been getting a lot of calls from individuals asking me a slightly different question. Mm -hmm. They're asking me, well, Lior, my employer says I can either get a vaccine, I decide I'm not going to do that, or I can choose to get regular COVID tests. Once a week, I have to go get a COVID test. Well, I don't want to do that. I think it's a, an invasion of my privacy, whatever the, the, the issue is. So can they make me get regular COVID tests? So the answer is yes. In most cases, your employer can make you get regular COVID tests. That is not illegal per se. That said, and I don't know that employers understand this, if you choose ultimately not to, and because of that, your employer lets you go, they still have to pay you severance. They still have to compensate you, and that severance can be up to 24 months pay. That's a significant amount. It's nothing at all that's minor uh, by any stretch. So even though the employer is not breaking any laws by saying you have to have regular COVID tests, if you ultimately choose not to, whatever the reason may be, you will then, if you lose your job, and by the way, you can't prevent your employer from letting you go. If you do lose your job, you're going to be owed severance. And you would qualify for employment insurance, so that's something else you have to keep in mind. Now, the only exception is situations where there's a government mandate in place that takes the decision away from your employer, where your employer has no say in the matter. That is very, very limited. Uh, in Alberta, we don't have that right now. In BC, we have that for long-term care homes. Uh, in Ontario, we have that for people in the healthcare sector. But in all other sectors, as we speak right now, as of today, that's not the case. So if you are going to lose your job because of a COVID test issue, yes, you are owed severance. Does, does the employer have any more leeway with the testing versus demanding that they get the vaccine, maybe under you know occupational health and safety or something like that? Is there a difference at all or no? So what I said before is that a mandatory vaccine could be discrimination, and it's discrimination based on what we call perceived disability. I don't feel the same way about COVID tests, and the reason for that is that's an alternative, that's a, a, a reasonable way to try to keep the workplace safe, though it's right. not illegal. That said, despite the fact that it's not illegal, that does not mean an employer can let an employee go without severance. And the reason that's the case is that wasn't a term of employment to begin with, You're, the employer is implementing a new term of employment that did not exist before and that they, strictly speaking, don't have to implement. So if an employer says, I'm not accepting a new term of employment, 
and that's why they lose their job, that's not cause. That is a without cause dismissal, meaning severance has to be paid. Yeah, I think a lot of the misunderstanding with people is the fact that whether it's the vaccine or the test, they're thinking they cannot fire me, period, because right. of this. That's You're absolutely right, because when people call me these days, they're not calling me about, hey, what do I do if I'm let go? They're right. calling me, how do I prevent being let go? The reality is that if you choose not to get the vaccine or the test, you cannot physically stop your employer from letting you go. Even as I said, mandatory vaccine policies in most cases may well be illegal. And despite that, you can't prevent your employer, you can't show the employer the law and all of a sudden now they change their mind. If the employer decides to let you go, there may be consequences. It could be damages, there could be compensation, severance that has to be paid. The way our laws work, John, is if the employer does something wrong, that's when we deal with it. There's no way to preempt it or to avoid something wrong from happening. Still some confusion. Reach out, talk to Lior, one of his crew. No problem. 1-855-821-5900, employmentlawyer.ca. While you're at that website, we've been doing a radio show for almost a decade. It's about an hour-long version of what you get here across the country, whether you're on Ontario or Alberta or BC or otherwise, you can check it out on the website, find a station near you that carries it. A lot of fascinating phone calls, questions like the stuff you ask every week come up on those phone calls during the radio show, so we'd like to play them back here. Let's uh, roll the first question for today. I work for a temporary agency and I've signed a contract, and in that contract, I am termed an elect to work employee, and it says, you know, termination pay specifically, it says I'm exempt from. The, the job that I had, I worked for them for three and a half years on one job with one contract with one company, and through no fault of the agency, that contract was lost. Am I entitled to severance? So let's be very clear. If you had a job and then you lost that job, yep. you are owed severance. I don't know that it can be clearer than that. And the employer doesn't avoid paying severance by hiring you through someone else, by calling you something that you're not, by creating some magical contractual term. If you had a job and you lost that job, you are owed severance. Now, a lot of people are hired through temp agencies and they may work for a company for a while. All of a sudden, they're out of a job. And I've seen time and time again, these employees being told, no, no, you work through a temp agency. We don't have to pay severance. Nonsense, ridiculous. Not only do you get severance, you get severance the same as everyone else that doesn't work through a temp agency. It does not avoid any company from paying. In fact, not only do they get severance, those temp employees, the, the temp agency and the actual company that they work for may be on the hook for that severance. So you have that double protection. But going back to this call that we just played uh, a moment ago, let's talk about how much severance this person is owed after their, uh, their job for three years. So we have our handy dandy tool, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You can pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There we have our severance calculator. So when you go there, you can calculate your own severance. It takes seconds to do, and it's free and anonymous. Let's take this information for this caller. Let's put it into pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, and let's see what we get. So we know that this person has been there for three years. Let's say they're 47 years old. They've been offered nothing because the company says, no, no, you're through a temp agency. You don't get any severance. You see in the bottom there, they're owed about three months' pay. Three months' pay, that's what they're owed, and it could be more than that. By the way, that three months, pretty, pretty conservative. I could have assessed them at four, five, even six months' pay. So that is something you have to keep in mind. If you lost your job, regardless of what you think your status is, go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, calculate your severance, call me, I'll tell you what you're owed. Please don't assume you don't get severance. If you have another way, or we're going to give you another way to reach out and ask questions anytime to Lior and his team at the firm, that would be terminationquestions.com, terminationquestions.com. I want to read one of these for you, Lior, to get, uh, get into it. Harry writes and says, I've been working for five years with the company. With my contract renewed every year, this time around, they decided not to renew because I failed to satisfy their difficult performance improvement plan. Am I owed severance? <laughs> So this is actually a reasonably common scenario. You sign a new contract every year, year end, sign a new contract, and on and on you go. And at some point, the company says, well, this year we're not renewing it so long, we're not have to pay anything, the contract simply expires. Yep. No, that's not how it works. Usually, once you go beyond three contracts, in this case, it's five contracts, five years, five contracts, the law considers you to be an indefinite employee. So even though you may sign a contract every year, you're now an indefinite employee. 
So if now the company doesn't quote unquote renew, in other words, you're out of a job, they have to pay you severance. So this person is gonna be owed severance based on their five years of seniority, even though they thought they were, again, quote unquote, on contract. That contract becomes meaningless. You lost your job, you're owed severance. Now, the fact that he was on a performance improvement plan doesn't really change that. Unless his performance was so bad, so terrible, that he was essentially deliberately doing a bad job, he is going to be owed severance. Same with you. Even though your performance maybe is not exactly where you want it to be, that does not allow the company to deprive you of your severance. Not at all. It is very, 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 very difficult. Did I say enough varies? I think I did. <laughs> to let someone go without severance. Remember that. Quickly, if, if he's let go before the expiration date of the contract, do they have to pay the balance? So because at this point he's on a, an indefinite uh, contract, yeah. then that contract doesn't matter. That said, if you sign one or two contracts and you're let go before that end date, as you said, yes, you have to get paid the balance. And you know my favorite story. I, had, I spoke once with a gentleman who worked for about five, or had a contract for a five-year term, was let go three or four months into it. Company said, we're not going to even bother paying you anything. Maybe give you a couple of days pay because you only work for three months. Contacted me and I said, well, wait a second. They owe you the balance of the contract, another four years and nine months. So that how, that's how it works if you're on a fixed term contract. If you're let go before, company still has to pay the balance. Coming up, severance pay, severance packages, uh, 101 for Canadians. We'll get to that after a short break. 1-855-821-5900 and help at employmentlawyer.ca. Coming right back, it's the Employment Law Show. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back and get what you're owed. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back, Employment Law Show. John Scholes and Lior Samfiru, co-founding partners, Samfiru, Tamarkin LLP have read and helped compensate, get the compensation for tens of thousands of Canadians across this country. So don't hesitate to reach out to them, 1-855-821-5900 or employmentlawyer.ca. This part, Lior, we've, uh, we've kind of handpicked this topic for today for any viewers that have not uh, joined the show ever before or maybe a little rusty on what they should know about severance packages. I love this one. Severance 101. I've got about six talking points. So I want to get into the first one. You do not have to sign or accept a severance package or offer on the spot or by your former employer's deadline. So we're talking about the important things you need to know about severance, the basics of severance. Even though they're basics, most people get these wrong, if not all of them, most of these points. And it's a great starting place, and that is that severance offer, that severance letter, that piece of paper you have in your hands if you lose your job that has a deadline. Employee, we're offering you three months severance, but hey, guess what? To, to accept it, you have to sign by Friday at 5 or you don't get it. Well, most people, when they see that and they read that, panic will set in. Wait a second, I better sign this by Friday. I don't want to lose three months pay. Who wants to lose three months pay? No, it is a pressure tactic. Do not sign it. And the reason you don't sign it is because chances are, and by chances I mean over 90% chance that that three months should be six months, 12 months, maybe 20 months, okay? And once you sign that piece of paper, that you can go back. There's no going back. That happens every day. Remember, your legal rights do not expire on that Friday deadline. In fact, your legal rights don't expire for two whole years. I am not suggesting you wait two years. I'm not even suggesting you wait two weeks. All I'm saying is don't worry about that deadline. If you lose your job, give me a call. You don't like me, fine, go to another employment lawyer. That's how strongly I feel about you getting proper legal advice. Even simpler, go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You can calculate your own severance momentarily, immediately. 
please don't fall for that pressure tactic. Too many people do, and then they call me, and I can't help in that situation. So you can, you, you know, I'm on TV now, so I can't deny ever saying this. You can and you should disregard that deadline. Severance package 101, that's what we're talking about. Number two is this one. A severance package is calculated using many fatteners, not just, you know, a couple weeks' pay. Right. Absolutely. So let's be very clear in terms of the factors that go uh, into calculating severance. So there's a few factors. The main ones are your age, your position, and the length of your employment. Our regular viewers know it's based on how long you work. The older you are, the more senior position you have, and the uh, and of course the older uh, older are senior position, the greater the entitlements. That said, okay, there's other factors as well. For example, right now we're in a pandemic. That may mean it's going to be harder to find another job. If that's the case, then of course, severance could be higher. If in fact you have a medical condition that impacts your ability to look for work, again, that may impact your severance. If you've been recruited from another job, that can increase your severance. If you're working in an industry where there's just not a lot of position, maybe it's a very specialized industry, you know, you're working for some uh, very complicated technological things that I don't even understand, there may not be a lot of jobs in that industry, that may mean even more severance. That is why it's so important to understand that there's all those factors. It's not a straight line of a week's pay or two weeks pay. It's much more nuanced than that. That's why you have to get advice. In between, phone call, 1-855-821-5900 and help at employmentlawyer.ca. Point number three is this, severance may be influenced by your employment contract. So a lot of employers are starting to understand, well, wait a second, we have to pay a lot of severance if we let employees go. We could, we, could have to pay up to 24 months pay. How do, I, uh, how do I avoid that? And a lot of employers try to avoid that by having terms in an employment agreement or in a job offer letter that try to minimize your future severance. So you have to be very careful what you agree to. You want to be careful not to sign something giving away tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in future severance. Now the good news is that in many of these cases where the company has tried to limit severance entitlements, they have not done so successfully for various reasons, which I'm not even going to get into right now. The termination terms in the offer letter are not enforceable. They don't actually limit your entitlements. So even if you did sign an employment agreement that tries to limit your entitlements, please don't assume that it does. You have to give me a call. We have to review it together. You send me a copy of the employment agreement. I can tell you in 30 seconds whether it limits your entitlements. So that's what you do. Don't ever make assumptions. That's probably one of the key points here. Don't make assumptions about your rights. And I guess the flip side of that coin is if you're an employer, don't simply you know, uh, scroll Google, look for an employment. Oh, that one will do. We'll just print that one off and get them to sign it. Right? So many times. Yeah, <laughs> you go to Google and say, you type in employment agreement. Oh, Template. <laughs> beautiful. Done. Print, sign here does not work, okay? You will find out later on that it doesn't do anything that you wanted it to do, waste of paper. Employment uh, severance package 101 number four is this. I just lost my uh, contact there. Anyway, you probably know what it is. You can read it <laughs> off your screen. I'm yes, black. so the, the, the point is, oh well, the point is that even you're owed severance even if you're let go for cause or even yes. if you're a contractor. So let's be very clear, to be let go without severance, number one, you'd have to have done something really bad something terrible, something so bad that makes it impossible to continue employing you. So the fact that you did something wrong does not deprive you of severance, not at all. Maybe you made a mistake. Uh, maybe you, you, you know what, you said something to your boss, you knew you shouldn't have done it. That's not good. I'm not suggesting you do that at all. But the question is, is that cause for termination? Do you lose your severance? And the answer almost always is no. It's very difficult to lose your severance. Same thing we talked about uh, on a previous show about being misclassified. Many people, a lot of people, are misclassified as contractors when they're really employees. If that's your situation, if you truly are an employee but are, are called a contractor, you are still owed severance. So again, the reason 2041 is to why you have to get advice if you lose your job. Again, that point and many more. You want more clarification, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca is a good place to start as well. Point number five is you may be owed severance if changes are made to your job, you're harassed or forced to resign too. So. We talked about severance if you lose your job. If the company comes to you and says, you're, you're gone, we're letting you go, yes, of course you're out severance. But you're gonna be out severance in situations where the company is not doing that, but something else has happened that ultimately makes you wanna leave. Like they change your job, they change your compensation, they mistreated you. They did something like that where you felt like you have no choice but to leave to resign, 
That's what we call a constructive dismissal. So even in the situations where you haven't been let go, but you've been put in a, in a difficult situation, even then you are owed severance. So constructive dismissal, very common, probably the most common form of constructive dismissal is changes to compensation or, or changes to work hours, you know, day shifts instead of evening, sh evening shifts or vice versa. If that happens to you, you have the ability to say, I am treating this as a termination. No, no, you didn't say, employer, that you were letting me go. I am saying you did, and now you have to pay me my severance. Finally, one more point. This uh, severance package 101, if you're new to the show or if you're just kind of brushing up on what you do and don't know, number six is this. You should talk to an employment lawyer before you sign any severance package. Goes without saying. I, I think they know I'm an employment yeah. lawyer already. John. <laughs> just making yeah. sure. Yeah. Thanks. Just making sure. No, the, the reality is that uh, I, I've been in many cases where individuals have tried to negotiate their severance packages on, on their own. Actually, I had a, a call recently. Well, uh, I'll tell you about it. Someone was offered 13 weeks on termination. They went to their employer and they said, I want 16 weeks. The employer said, fine, they had a deal. That's when the employee had second thoughts and called me and said, Leo, did I do the right thing? No, they were owed eight months pay. Ooh. Okay, that's about 34 weeks. The problem is they already reached a deal with their employer. So don't try to do that on your own. For this person, I had to give him the bad news that because he negotiated it on his own, because he agreed with his employer on an extra three weeks when he was owed an extra five months, there's nothing that I could do for him. So please, let me do what I do for a living. Don't try to do it on your own and compromise your entitlements. Well, that just shows, number one, that the, he didn't know what his, his, his entitlement should be. Number two, there's a chance the employer will say, no, now what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, in this case, the problem was the employer said yes. yes. <laughs> that was an even bigger problem, because yeah. if the employer had said no, he'd still be able to do something. Right. But because the employer said yes, they had a deal, terrible deal for the employee, but he didn't know that at the time. So please, you know better now. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to understand what you owed if you lost your job. We'll take a couple minutes here, grab another phone call from our radio show right now. What typically is the uh, severance that's required if somebody is let go with, if they've been working for less than one year? I thought that it was limited to one month as per the employment act. Is that an accurate? There's a lot of wrong assumptions there, but let, let's start with the idea that short service employees, and he's asking about someone that's worked for less than a year, short service employees get disproportionately more severance than long service employees. So if you work for a year, you could be owed a few months pay. So for this person, again, I don't know exactly the type of job and his age, but usually if it's not a kind of a part-time job, if it's a career type job, you're not going to get less than three months pay in most cases. And it could be more than that. It could be four, five, or six months pay. The Employment Standards Act is not really that relevant because your entitlements are based on what we call the common law. Employment Standards Act only outlines your minimum entitlements, not your full entitlements. The common law outlines your full entitlements. And even after working for a few months, you could be owed a few months severance. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that it's so important to get advice if you lost your job. Because even though it was a short work time, it doesn't mean it's going to be any easier for him to get a job to the next guy. Absolutely. Right. Maybe even more difficult. Right. Because he's going to have to explain to the new employer, why did you only work for eight months with the previous company? Right. Well, we don't feel good about you. We're not going to hire you. So that's why that severance is still going to be significant, even if you work for a short period of time. I mentioned one break. We'll get to it right now, a short one. In the meantime, write this down. one 821 5900 Help at employmentlawyer.ca and covidrights.ca for more information on that topic. As well. We'll continue with Employment Law Show. Hang on. People think you should go to the government to get severance pay. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Government can only help you get minimum severance, but not everything you're entitled to. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. If your long term disability claim is denied, should you appeal? Appeals often fail because insurance companies control the process. So long as you appeal, you're playing by their rules. You should never appeal the denial of your disability benefits. Appeals are just a mirage of false hope. Don't. That's their process. Take it out of their hands and fight for your rights with our help. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think their employer can make changes to their job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Your employer can't change your pay, hours, or duties. You may be entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca.
All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Employmentlawyer.ca is the website you want to go for many things, all things about employment law, contact, reach uh, Savannah, or Leo rather, and his team, and Savannah as well if you're doing disability law. But uh, it's also a good place to find a radio show near you where you can catch this employment law show on radio. Phone call number three from the show is going to happen right now. What are the options for my sister that was sexually harassed working for a corporation? Very serious things that happened at work. The management is now saying you have options to her, but she doesn't know what to do. So she just bows her head down and works for the corporation, and she's been given all these uh, cushy jobs. Please don't go to anyone. Please just take this, that, and the other. What are her options? Wow, that, that's, that's insane. That's like something out of a, of a bad novel or something. Yeah. No, you, you can't do that. So if if she's being sexually harassed, if she's being harassed, period, she needs to make sure that her employer does something to make sure that, first of all, that never happens again to her or to anyone else. Okay, so that's the primary thing I think that she must do. What have you done, employer, to make sure that this person, the perpetrator, doesn't do this again, that hopefully he or she is removed from the workplace so, so that this is never an issue for anyone? So the employer cannot you know, brush this under the rug, sweep this under the rug and hope for the best. They have to deal with this. They have to investigate and take measures. And to try to silence someone that's a victim of sexual harassment, well, that's just, well, it's illegal, it's immoral, it's the wrong thing to do. Now, beyond that, if she, in fact, was sexually harassed, depending on the circumstances, there could be absolutely significant damages that could be owed under the Human Rights Court, under the Employment Standards Act, uh, damages for wrongful dismissal, you name it. So. I would do the right thing, which is to get legal advice. You know, I'm not going to try to give a full-blown analysis here of something that serious, but I would tell his sister to give me a call, but certainly make sure, hold your employer to account. Make sure that your employer does something to make sure that this never happens again. Questions after the show, another place you can go, terminationquestions.com. Lior, we got time to get one of these in before we wrap for the, uh, the day. Renan writes in, says, my 63-year-old uncle is being assigned to uh, an employment contract, uh, being asked to sign an employment contract, rather. He never signed one when he started with his employer 16 years ago. Three of his close colleagues signed one a few months ago and were fired shortly afterwards without any severance pay. What are his rights? Well, I think uh, Rannon here is hitting the nail on the head. Uh, there's a reason why the employer wants the employment agreement to sign. It's not because they just decided they like to have pieces of paper lying around the office. It's because they want to have terms in that agreement that limit future severance. So think about it. If the employer says, I know I need to let someone go, but I'd, I'm going to have to pay them 20 months severance. I know what to do. Let them, have a, let them sign a new employment agreement that limits that. So instead of 20 months, I only have to pay them eight weeks. Employee does a no better signs, a month later loses their job. Now they could have lost tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. Please don't do that. If your employer out of the blue wants you to sign a new employment agreement, that's never a good thing. Okay, it's never something you should be itching to do or you know, raising your hand, volunteering to do, not at all. There's always a reason for that. And the reason is not to provide you with better entitlements, better legal protections than what you had. It's to provide the employer with better protections. So if you've been asked to sign a new agreement, send me a copy. Let me read it. Let me tell you what it does, what it means. If there's no problem, I'll tell you there's no problem. If there's a problem, you are better off not signing it. You can't be punished. You can't be let go for cause for not signing a new employment agreement. Much better to do that and not lose your entitlements. Don't you have to get something for it anyway to make it binding? Sure. For a new employment agreement to be binding, you have to get something in return. That said, the new employment agreement may say, we're going to give you an extra two days vacation. That's still not good enough reason to sign and lose tens of thousands of dollars in yeah. severance. So bottom line, be weary of new employment agreements. Lots of stuff covered on the show today. You want to reach out? No problem. I'll give you the final contact information for the show. 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca and covidrights.ca. If it's all about vaccines and mandating and stuff, you can reach out to Lior as well. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. Employment Law Show. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.